Pole Society, this is Michelle. Okay, so you needed food tonight, did you? Okay, Lee, we have um, 10 Fred's vans located all around South Australia. Uh, can you tell me whereabouts you are and I could see if I could match you up with the nearest Fred's van to you? We're at uh, Fred's van at Hawthorne and we supply uh, meals to go into Gawler Place in the city. We, on a Thursday, do sausages, we make sandwiches, and we have curry provided, someone volunteers, and they meet us at Gawler Place with curry and rice, and we have cakes, sometimes we have fruit, and then we have various other items that are supplied to us from supermarkets, so they have quite a variety of things to eat. We probably have about uh, 12 on the books, but we usually have about seven to eight that actually roll up on the night to volunteer. We need at least seven because they have tea and coffee and there's sausages and someone serves curry and rice and someone sort of is a PR person that goes around and talks to everybody and makes sure everyone's okay. And then we hand out blankets if they're required and sometimes beanies depending on the weather. Yeah, we expect about 70 or 80 people there tonight. Although being a little bit cold and wet, there could be a few more. There's a variety of people. We do have our regulars that come in on a regular basis, but we have people that we've never seen before that just seem to come off the street. There's probably a mix of homeless, people living in hostels, people that are disadvantaged or finding it difficult at a particular time financially. Yeah, so quite a range of different people. It's important to provide very nutritious food because otherwise it's obviously going to affect their health. If they're cold and damp and miserable and they're not eating properly, then they're going to have major health issues. And a lot of them already do have health issues. So it just compounds, you know, that problem. So this would be the kind of food that I use at home for our family. And you will see, it'll be beautiful and the smell will be amazing. Everybody will like them. I would enjoy having some onion with it, so I'm going to do it. I'm doing it if it was for me and my family. So hopefully, everybody else will enjoy it. Oh look, I wouldn't serve it unless I would eat it myself. It shows that you put love into it too. You know, if you just come in and just say, oh yeah, a bit of this and a bit of that, who cares, I'm not going to eat it myself. That's not the attitude, is it? Now I just need to grab a fork and have a bit of a taste, just see that's cooked. Tell you what, marvellous. My kitchen definitely rules. I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. <laughs> we're friendly with them. They, they, they get to know us. It's like an extended family. I, I, you know, they, they know us by our names. Oh, look, food is a comfort, isn't it? You know, if you're sad or anything, a nice dish makes you happy. You know, it's the same with these people that come through, you know. I think they come in, they have a good feed, they see all their friends, they go home, they're happy. They take some uh, food with them as well. And once your stomach is full, come on, you're pretty happy. Is there? Everything else goes well from there onwards, I would say. There's quite a few regulars and you get to know them and you understand that um, had circumstances been different it could have been any one of us that are actually in their situation so I think everyone that works for Fred's has a great deal of empathy and uh, I would have to say that most of the clients that we deal with are very grateful, lovely to talk to, just uh, you know really nice people and genuinely appreciate what we do and we enjoy doing it. Thanks for Fred Van, all of you. <laughs> it feels good as a team, the fact that you're actually out there helping. You know, these people who, through circumstances, that uh, no fault of their own, they're out there and finding it tough. Good. Who was yeah. it? <laughs> yeah. oh, no, it was a good night, everyone was happy. We had plenty of food, clients tonight. Uh, satisfied clients. It was wet, but uh, not a problem, and everyone's got away happy. So, yeah, go for it. Yeah, good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
work that we're doing collectively as CEOs all raising money for Vinnie's, you know, we should feel really good about that. And I think not only are we raising money, but we are making a real difference. Um, you know, I think the money that, that I raised through the team at Bank of Say last year fed this whole centre for, for more than a year. So, you know, that's a, a great outcome and it makes me feel very proud and I know my team um, very proud as well. Um, hey. G'day. How are you? Good, thanks. Just here, we have a facility for the disabled. There's 50 or 49 beds in this centre that are full every night. Um, I think there's about a thousand people who are helped a year through this centre and nice meals on the table in the morning and the evening. Um, and I just had one tonight and it's, it's great food, a nice warm meal and a very cool uh, to cold evening tonight. And uh, you know, I think it's, it's, it's something that we should be really proud of. Talking to Tony tonight, we've all, um, Vinny's has got him into a, a little bed sitter on South Terrace and he's just completely chuffed at the, the support he's had. By ancient definition, this is a crisis shelter for homeless men. The men need to use the time really wisely as their time at the centre is limited due to the relentless demand. There is an 11pm curfew because a lot of these guys have early morning medical appointments, they look for jobs, they have interviews as well, and they are entitled to a good night's sleep. This place is about providing the men with the best grounding possible to meet the challenges of their day ahead. Yeah, the guys that come here are really running from family or relationship breakdowns, drug, alcohol or gambling addiction or even mental illness. The staff here are not really trained mental nurses but they, they really know how to deal with the men very very well and they're very committed and hence there's very low turnover of staff and many of them have been here at the centre for, for many many years and essentially this comes down to their philosophy and purpose of simply wanting to help people. It's very very humbling. Why I'm involved is in, in this process is I really want to spread the word. I want the awareness to go up. The fact that you know 100,000 people sleep out every night across Australia is just a real shame. And you know there's there's up to 20,000 homeless people in South Australia in, under different sort of scenarios. But you know, that's a real uh, a real shame and, and something that I personally want to do something about. And that's what I'm doing. <laughs> Our service is primarily directed at new arrival refugees, so the first two years of their stay in Adelaide. Then we try and get um, our clients to move off into our conferences so that they can be assisted at the local level. The ones that really strike me are the people on the skilled migrants visa who really have no income and haven't been able to find a job and a lot of them have young families so it makes it even more difficult. I guess our biggest clientele though come from Af Afghan and Iran uh, where there's been a lot of trauma I guess in that part of the world. Mostly it is emergency aid in terms of food, clothing and furniture. And then we also provide assistance with utility bills, rent, um, and we do referrals to other services like dental services, employment services, things of that nature. Volunteers are really important because yes they do, they bring their outside knowledge, their life experience. Some of our volunteers have been in the refugee situation themselves. You know, I can understand how these people feeling experience and from there I can be able to help them. And if I help them it's just you know, you know, just Help in small things, it's put them smile in their face, make me really happy. Um, that's one of the things, um, and I really love to help people. Without them, 
who would be doing all you know the interviewing and allocating the stuff. It's not a one person thing. We try and work here as a team. My personal opinion is that we need to um, embrace the dignity of every person and, and we just need the money to do that. It's the least that we can do to uh, spend a bit of time giving. My perception of homelessness has changed dramatically. You can't pigeonhole homelessness into one particular scenario. There's, there's many, many different scenarios. And having dinner with, with three guys tonight, you know, each one had a different story. So you know, talking to the three guys tonight was like talking to my mates. They had great conversation, very articulate, and um, they had genuine interest in, in me and, and, and likewise with them, and I, I thought you know, it was a great experience and something that I look forward to doing again. For me, it became a challenge to help these people find human dignity and find a place where they could come and someone would listen. It's a kind of a spiritual for me, working here. And it's, as a migrant, I can understand them and also, you know, it's really hard for them to express themselves. So it's always nice to help them, as for me. Sometimes people will come back and say thank you for what you've done and we don't look for that but it just emphasises how important it is to go really beyond the handout concept to really helping people to settle, giving them a hand up and helping them to settle in our community. We are a call to do that, to respond to that need. Yeah. Thank you for your time to see, even for a little while, what it's like to be sleeping on the streets. Thank you for your compassion and understanding. I know with wealth, some may have forgot or not know how hard it is to start with nothing to start at all. Thank you for opening your eyes and hearts to this other world, the same, yet worlds apart. Thank you. Thank you.